Hey, welcome to Non-Standard Models, where we tackle cutting-edge problems in theoretical physics. Today, I'm here with Emmanuel Malek. Hi. And Michele Galli. Hello. Emmanuel is a research group leader in string theory at Humboldt University Berlin, and Michele is a PhD student working in Emmanuel's group. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you. You may have heard already about string theory as one of the possible candidates not only to explain gravity at the tiniest scales, but also to address other deep open questions in fundamental physics. In string theory, if you look closely enough, you will notice that particles are not like points, but instead they are vibrating strings. And every vibration of the strings is associated to a particular particle, the same as vibration of guitar strings produce different sounds. Emmanuel and Michele in particular study how extra dimensions manifest themselves in the world of string theory. And today they're here to tell us about the possibility that extra dimensions are real, but hidden to us, and how we can deal with them. As far as we know, we can move in three spatial directions and there is also time, so it is up to four space-time dimensions. But how can we know for sure that we live in just four dimensions? Well, we can't. We're used to moving up and down, back and forth, left and right, and Einstein tells us that time is also a dimension. And this is all we know from our experiences. However, it doesn't mean that extra dimensions could not exist. That's right, Michele. Think, for example, about a sphere traveling across a two-dimensional plane. The inhabitants on the plane would first see a point, then this point would turn into a circle which grows larger and larger, and eventually the circle would start shrinking again, turning back into a point. Maybe similar phenomena due to the existence of extra dimensions are going on in our universe. So it can be really useful to contemplate theories with extra dimensions in order to probe our universe. Some theories even force us to consider extra dimensions, such as string theory. Well, now I'm really intrigued. So what if extra dimension exist? How would we know that they exist? What would happen to our universe? Let's find out. Emmanuel, you just said that extra dimensions may really exist. So if we assume that they're real, why can we not see them or walk in them? Our best hypothesis is that these extra dimensions are really tiny in comparison to the three spatial dimensions that we're used to. Consider, for example, a lasagna. From afar, this looks like a plane, making it two-dimensional. However, if you look more closely at the lasagna, you notice that it has some thickness, and therefore it is in fact three-dimensional. When a dimension is really small like this, we say that it is compactified. In fact, we can even compactify one more dimension of the lasagna by joining the two ends and shrinking the diameter of the cylinder that we thus obtain. And well, then we obtain a spaghetto. <laughs> but does this mean that somebody really, really tiny should be able to perceive them? Like, how small would I have to be to walk in them? Like an electron, would it be able to do it? No, something much tinier. These length scales are far beyond the scope of our colliders. We expect a land scale of about 10 to the minus 35 meters, which we call the Planck scale. This is like comparing the size of an atom to the size of the entire universe. In order to probe such small land scales, we would need an enormous amount of energy that only a collider as large as the entire solar system could provide us. Oh, so their scale is really small. It sounds like it's almost impossible to detect them. Nonetheless, Emmanuel, you mentioned before that they can be really useful to probe a universe. When did scientists start to consider them? It was in the 1850s that mathematicians and physicists first started to actively study the connection between the geometry of space-time and our universe, and also developed a formalism that could describe extra dimensions. However, only in the 1920s were compactified extra dimensions included in theories that could unify gravity with the other forces of nature. Oh, maybe could you tell us more about this attempt? Sure. As Emmanuel was saying, scientists at the time were trying to think of a way to unify gravity and electromagnetism in a single model. Gravity is the attractive force between objects with mass, and electromagnetism describes the electromagnetic interactions between charged objects. The physicists Kaluza and Klein thought of a theory where gravity and electromagnetism can be viewed as two sides of the same coin. Now, imagine you live in a world with five space-time dimensions, where one is compactified and say the only force in this world is gravity. Now imagine you're a physicist trying to study this exotic world. First of all, you would believe you live in four dimensions because the fifth one is so small, you could not access it. 
Then Kaluza-Klein theory tells you that all the gravitational physics happening in the fifth dimension would be perceived by you as electromagnetic phenomena. Okay, it really sounds like a strange world. So strange I cannot imagine it. Maybe do you have a more visual example in mind? Yes, I do. It's simplified, but it will do the job. Imagine a straight line which, at a point, has a very small circle attached to it. This is how we're going to represent our compact extra dimension. Now, if you zoom into a particle moving on the line, you see that when it meets the circle, it just loops around it once and then continues on its original path. If you now zoom out, you cannot see the circle anymore because it is too small. So what you would observe is that the particle moves, slows down, stops, and then resumes on its course. If you hadn't introduced extra dimensions in your model, you would have to attribute this effect to some force accelerating and decelerating the particle, rather than to its ability to move on an extra dimension. Okay, thanks. Now I can see it more clearly. So, some phenomena that we observe in our universe may be indication that something is happening in super small extra dimensions that we cannot access because we're too big to perceive them? Yes, and this idea gained popularity in the late 70s when string theory emerged as a possible theory of quantum gravity which would unify all the forces of nature. And string theory requires the existence of extra dimensions. And why does string theory needs extra dimension? Well, the special theory of relativity developed by Einstein tells us that the laws of physics should not depend on your position or your movement. This is what physicists call Lorentz invariance. This is a very important principle and very well tested, which every theory aspiring to describe the universe needs to satisfy. And it so happens that quantum theories of strings cannot have Lorentz invariance unless they include extra dimensions. Wait, but you just said theories, plural. Well, that's because we cheated a bit up to this point. There exist indeed several different string theories, but they all require extra dimensions to work. In fact, they all require 10 spacetime dimensions. Wow, 10. Uh, it's a lot of dimensions. But okay, so that at least now we know there is a chance extra dimension could exist. How can we make sure about their existence? I mean, how can we probe them? Well, it depends on how big they are. So all the ones we consider so far are extremely small, so we cannot probe them with colliders. However, all the theories we discussed predict the presence of massive particles. And the masses of these particles are connected with the geometry of the extra dimensions. Now, these particles could be a massive graviton, some supersymmetric particles, or some other exotic particles predicted by string theory. Okay, also supersymmetric particles. Supersymmetry is an extension of the standard model in which for each standard model particle, there is another particle, its supersymmetric partner. And in principle, supersymmetry could help find some answers to open questions, and you're saying also some evidence for string theory and for the existence of extra dimensions. But the collider LHC in Geneva so far hasn't found any supersymmetry particle. Yes, that's true, but there are other models that we can test. For example, observational cosmology and astrophysics could detect the signatures of these extra dimensions. In particular, the cosmic microwave background and gravitational waves contain a lot of information that needs to be analyzed and probed to more precision. Okay, but since signatures of extra dimensions have not yet been found, how can we distinguish a promising model from a dead end? Well, this question is really hard to address, and this has been the main challenge for researchers in our field for the last 40 years. Michele and I are trying to tackle this problem by looking for instabilities, a huge flaw of most of these models. But what do you mean by instabilities? Well, imagine trying to balance a pencil on its tip. The laws of physics do not forbid this, but it's impossible to achieve because the configuration is unstable. What we mean by this is that even the tiniest of disturbances will cause the pencil to fall over. Similarly, an unstable universe could only exist for the tiniest amount of time before collapsing. And this is clearly not what we're trying to describe. So what we're looking for are models without instabilities. But how do you spot instabilities in a theory? Well, as we mentioned earlier, there is a connection between the geometry of the extra dimensions and the masses predicted by a theory. So, an instability would manifest itself as particles with the bizarre property that their masses square to negative numbers. These particles can travel faster than the speed of light, and we call them tachyons. One way to guarantee stability would be to introduce supersymmetry, because in supersymmetric models, all the masses are guaranteed to square to positive numbers. On the other hand, non-supersymmetric models are usually unstable 
and much more complicated to study. However, our particle colliders still haven't been able to detect supersymmetry. Therefore, what we're really looking for is a stable, non-supersymmetric model. Right, and we don't expect there to be many, but that's good because one of the problems of string theory is that it gives us countless different models which look like they could describe our universe. This makes it very difficult to extract predictions from string theory and ultimately to test it. Maybe requiring stability without supersymmetry constrains our choices enough that we would be left with one or a handful of possibilities. This would then ultimately allow us to test string theory. Up until very recently, it's been difficult to demonstrate stability. However, we're now developing powerful new methods and hopefully moving in the right direction. Eventually, we will be able to make our way through the sea of possible string theories and find the one that describes our universe. This makes for a tough search, but at least we know what we're after. That sounds epic. Thanks a lot, Emmanuel and Michele, for this extraordinary chat and for revealing this hidden world to us. Thank you. Thanks. And thanks you for watching. See you next time here on Non-Center Models.